And hello good people of the internet, it is I, Tommy Kelly, and this is Adventures in Wubu. This episode is another one of the 40 servants, one card readings, divinations type things that I do for patrons. So if you'd like your question to be in the next uh, divination video, then you'll have to join Patreon and ask me it. Well, ask the 40 servants it, not me. As always, I want to preface this by saying that I see divinations as advice from a friend not the end-all and be-all word from God. So uh, I would like you all to, who are getting the, your questions answered today to take it in that spirit. Advice from a friend over a cup of coffee rather than <laughs> divine providence coming down and telling you the final solution or answer to your problem. So we're going to start with Grayson. And Grayson asks, what can I do to help my book publishing go smoothly? So... Here we go. So we have the moon. Okay, so the moon is about the light and the darkness. There's a kind of a, a thing about hope in it. Um, but a hope in a kind of a dangerous sense of that. The only reason that we can we get um, let down is because we have hope in the first place. So there's that kind of um, negative quality to hope that it's a thing that can you know if you didn't have hope you you know you don't have anything to be let down on but also you know you need hope or else you wouldn't bother doing anything but there is a kind of a thing of a suggestion coming through i suppose should that to say that don't don't set yourself up to uh for a fall in the sense of that's not to say that um your book won't come out it won't be a huge success you know, you won't be very happy with it, all of these things. It just means that because you're thinking of it going smoothly, maybe it won't. And maybe the process has to be that it doesn't go smoothly for the benefit of the overall piece of art or for some sort of life lesson or something. Now, I don't think life throws stuff, well, I hope it doesn't. It sometimes feels like it does deliberately <clears throat> throw stuff at you just so you can learn. You know, in a sense, kind of in a spiteful vengeance way of, you know, oh, you learn from this. So it's not really that. It's kind of Maybe there's some sort of thing that needs to happen in order for a greater um, manifestation of this thing. And the kind of that the hope of wanting it all to go completely smoothly, quickly done might necessarily be conducive to the overall thing that you're trying to achieve. Um, it's also the moon is about illusions and about shadow work and about looking at things that you don't really want to see. So that could be just an example, something around that you mightn't, that someone, if you get someone to edit it, and they have some sort of thing, that the suggestion to it, to maybe not to be too, you know, not remain too close to it, to like kind of allow, you know, critique or something into it. I don't know, there's some sort of thing around illusion about it, which may be about the process of publishing rather than the actual thing. It would be like, it would be, this is a better movie than it is a book and you should write the screenplay and you go but it's a book and you go well you know it might be a screenplay that's kind of what more what, I, what i'm saying it might be any of that but there's some sort of suggestion that maybe first of all be aware of what your expectations and hopes are you're setting you up for a fall and is are you in some way ex not open to the possibility that it might be something else that's kind of it so spirit what topic should I focus on in my spiritual teachings business to meet my goals? Okay. So we have the levitator. So the levitator is obviously about rising above the, uh, the madness of the world, of the, the hurt, the anger, the resentments, the day-to-day um, -day terribleness of the world. In, in the, you know, not quite terribleness, but the, the, you know, your, your normal struggles, your thing. If you're in the middle of it, like some sort of thing at work, and there's office politics go on is to is to, to, to go you know above it see don't get involved in it just rise above it you know don't let it affect you and that kind of thing so i would suggest what topic should i focus on in my spiritual teaching is to how to do that how to um not get bogged down in day-to-day -day living in the day-to-day -day crises the day-to-day -day dramas the uh, how to in a sense be able to put all of your problems or your challenges in a perspective so that they don't become um, all-encompassing or overpowering and uh, yeah in some way to deal with life so that it from spiritual teaching is rather than seeing everything as a kind of a 
you know, to, to, to an actual practical spiritual thing in which you can show people how to deal with real life situations and not get bogged down in them. That's what that would suggest to me. Tyrone, have I successfully banished all adversary, adversarial ancestral spirits? It's just going to be yes or no, Tyrone, unless something jumps out more. The balancer. <laughs> Yes, then I suppose you've balanced out the thing. Or you've got to a situation where uh, anything that's left is keeping everything in... It's, it's, right, it's okay, it's fine, it's keeping everything in balance. That where you're at is a balance. So that you might necessarily have banished them all, but you don't need to. That's what it would suggest to me. Abraxas, what can I expect from this? Ever obtuse Abraxas with his questions. I do enjoy them. The dancer. What you should expect from this, Abraxas, is to just go with it. That whatever it is that is thrown at you, that it will be in the resistance of it that will cause the hardship. Um, and that if you don't resist it, if you just dance in the rain, dance when it's raining, just, you know, as Stuart Wilde would say, just do rain, then there's no resistance and it's just, it can come and go. Very, very easy to say, obviously, and uh, a lot harder to do in practice, but it's kind of, if you can allow whatever is happening, and I suspect I have an inkling, uh, that just to, to allow it and don't fight it and be, be, be with it, and just, this is what it is, this is what has to happen. Not has to happen in a kind of a, a fate or destiny, but this is what is happening, and no amount of trying to not have it happen is going to stop it from happening, other than you're going to get annoyed about it happening. And just, so just go with it and enjoy it as much as you can, uh, if that is a possibility. Natasha von Steers. Hold on until I scroll a bit. What's the best way to approach the people I want to collaborate with? Um, let's see. Okay, it's popping out. Okay, the sun. The best way to approach them is showing them what you can do uh, and have energy because the sun's energy and there's a sense of power, but I don't think it's power. It's not kind of, um, not power in the sense of that you have power over them, but power in the sense that you can get things done, that you can uh, renew life, you can, you know, all the things that the sun does, like it creates things, it creates life, it's light, it's power, it's energy. Uh, so to show them that that's what you can bring to whatever project you are planning to do, I want to collaborate with them, that, you're, that you are the energy, that you can do things, you will do things, and that you can, uh, in a way, and I'm hesitant on this to sustain it, but that, that I, why I'm hesitant is that don't, you know, don't feel that you have to do all the work. It's, that's, not, that's not quite it. It's just in that you can add this to it and you can rejuvenate maybe something that they've done before, put new energy into it or something like that, and you can sustain it in that way. Not that it's all the burden of the entire thing is to be on you. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's why I would approach it from that way, showing what you can do, um, and how that can help with what they're currently doing or might be interested in doing. Um, Augustine, what do I need to consider to turn my art into my career? Well, <laughs> I can answer this question for you, but I'll, 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 I know you're not asking me. Um, patience and um, n uh, manage expectations and I, the way I was able to do it was that rather than trying to increase my income, I reduced my expenditure so that it became a very cheap thing for me to be able to sustain myself as an artist rather than trying to live the life, man, and have art pay for it. But you didn't ask me. You asked the 40 servants. So they might say something completely different to you. Well, okay. Two cards for some reason. So we have the opposer and the guru. Now, good. The guru says that you need to think about this practically and you need to do practical things. You need to get your money together, you need to get your budgets together, your business plan, what you're actually going to do. Rather than just turning my art into a career, how does that look? How does that look on paper? What is that? What does that look like? Get the, you know, the actual, talk to an accountant, talk to a, a solicitor, a lawyer, or you know how that looks, have a business plan, know how to set up a business, know how to become a sole trader or a self-employed person um, and do all that, there's a practicality. The other thing is to be aware of external opposition to that. 
And I don't know if that's... It's just... It, it, all I can say is that it's saying to be aware that that is going to be an element of it, that one of the things you're going to have to come over is external opposition to it. That could come in the form of people telling you not to be silly, don't do this, uh, you know, do something more realistic, you know, all that stuff that people say when you try to do something with your life that's meaning, uh, personally meaningful. Uh, and I come from a good place, I think, mostly in that they don't want to see you crushed or they don't want to see, you know, your life be hard and that. But it also, you know, I don't think people realise that it's crushing you in a different way. And, you know, a, a bit of concern with some support is probably the better attitude. But anyway, the opposer are saying that there will be some sort of outside influence or opposition. Whether that is from people, as I said, not giving you the right support that you need, or from actual um, situations that won't allow you uh, to, or will make it harder for you to get to where you want. And I don't know, but it's just something to consider that you will find that, and not to be surprised when it happens. You know, don't think... If you go in thinking this is all going to be easy and I'm just going to sail through it and don't, and don't expect opposition, it's going to be a lot harder than if you're going into this expecting opposition and maybe not finding it, but maybe finding it and being prepared for it. So, practically, practically prepared for it. Have your I's dotted and your T's crossed. Be practical uh, and have all the, you know, the guru stuff, to all the how, how to actually do it, what, what is your plan, all of these things, and that will lessen the opposition. James Baker. What do, the, what do the servants have to say about the educational path that I have recently chosen? Um, the idea, that it's a good idea, that's what the, it's saying. That the idea, it's, it's one of my favourite servants and because it, it can be anything, it, it's potentiality. It's the chaos and the primordial chaos, it can be anything. And it's just that, but... If you have something that's a potentiality, it might, you know, you need a start. It has to, like, that's why it's a flower. That's why, you know, you have the seed and it comes into the world. And that if you've read them, my, my comic them, it, where's the idea that actual artwork comes from? It, it starts as very much as a seed and, you know, and it grows into the world. And it's the idea that saves them, ultimately. Um, so it, it's, it's all well and good to have you know, talk of potentiality, you know, chaos, things can be anything, but there needs to be a place where it starts, because it has, for, in order for a man to exist, the baby has to be there first. In order for um, a, a tree to exist, it has to have once been a, a point where it wasn't a tree, but had decided to be a tree, which is the seed. Um, so what did the servants have to say about the educated path I have recently chosen? That could be it for you. It's the thing from which potential, potentiality can enter into your world and grow into something. Awesome, that sounds great. Cat, am I being targeted by the person I suspect or is it someone else? Cat, there's a presupposition in your question which I would uh, say to you that you need to look at in that you've already decided that someone is targeting you. And I mean, from your perspective, you might go, well, there's definitely someone targeting me. A better question, and not the question I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask your own question, would be, am I being targeted? <laughs> or um, a more general, what is uh, the situation, what, you know, around, why am I feeling this way? Why are these events happening? What is that? That's how I would approach it. But um, just because I, there's, there's a presupposition in that you're presupposing something is already the case, you know, uh, a priori, that mightn't be. You, you could object and go, no, it's definitely happened. So that's why I'm going to answer the question. And this is the card that's co coming out for me. It's the moon. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to suggest that my uh, ramble at the beginning is true. That you, uh, being that the moon is about illusion and li lies. I'm not saying you're lying. You're definitely not lying because um, you feel it's true. So it's definitely not a lie. But untruths, falsities. There's, some, there's a falseness around us. There's something that's not true about this situation. And when I seen the question first, that, that I had a, that, that was my reaction, is that there, there, there's a falsehood in the question. In that the question, yeah, it's, not, it, it, it's implying something that may not be the case, and that you have to kind of widen out what you're looking at around the situation and have a different, come at it f from anew without having decided already what it is. You know, that's extremely unhelpful and if you feel you're being targeted 
Well, let me see. If you've, like, you could you go, well, I have physical evidence of being targeted in that I've, say, I don't know, you've phone messages or you have, you know, actual physical evidence, you know, but you don't know who it is. That's your guess. So see, it, for me then to say that it might be that you're targeted, it's, you're just going to, yeah, whatever, man, because I am. So if that is the case, then what it would be is that the implications of that mightn't be what you think it is, that there's something around that entire thing that you haven't considered. And until you consider it, it won't reveal itself to be what it is. That, I think that's the best way I can describe it. Um, so you need to loosen your kind of grip on what you think is going on in order to see what is actually happening. And I mean, I, I don't envy you. Like, I mean, do some banishings, you know, do, do, do some practical work. You know, uh, if you do feel you've been targeted, obviously go to the authorities and talk about it, get some help. Uh, that kind of that kind of stuff too. Um, if your life is in danger, or if you've you know there's actual things people attacking you, don't rely on magic. Get help. Go talk to people. Go talk to people who can help you. You know, get you know file uh, reports, all of those things. You know, if you are getting text messages or whatever it is, emails, whatever. I don't. Know, I have no idea what your situation is. Record everything. Keep it all, uh, and get help. Hope. I hope that works out for you soon, Kat. I really do. Uh, Jason, describe the current state of the energy surrounding my ma magical pursuits. Okay. The father. The father is kind of, he's the guide in the sense of he's the person who will let the the son or the daughter or the child make their own mistakes or allow them to experience the hardships or the realities of life not kind of shielding them from it but not kind of in a sense going you know you're on your own it's being with them while they experience that so it's um as opposed to say the mother which like I'm not saying that men and women are like this, I'm saying like in an archetypical type of way. The mother would kind of protect the child from burning the finger on the fire. Whereas the father might see the utility in allowing the child to burn the finger on the fire so that they never do it again. So that they become aware of the danger, they become aware of the consequence. They, um, they learn from reality rather than, rather than a rule. Don't go near the fire, it's hot, because mommy says. Find out for yourself why you shouldn't go near the fire. So the current state of the energy surrounding my magical pursuits would be the energy of finding out for yourself and but be aware that it, it, you're not on your own. It, it, it's it's fine it, it would be like if you were doing if you were told that doing sigils behaved in a certain way and that's how it was and you just kind of agreed with that your magical state at the minute would be to do the sigils and find out for yourself and find your own truth in it or not your own truth necessarily but your own under proper understanding of it in that rather than just having the knowledge of it you understand it that's uh that seems a good place to be in many ways could be tough though lewis i need you tommy lewis you do not need me in any way do not uh need anyone um my magic seems to be stagnant. Why? Um, seriously, you don't need me at all. The whole point, if I have any <laughs> wisdom to offer you, is that you need yourself and y you are... You are the wizard. You are the center of the universe. You are the agency through which, to, through which magic works. You. And if you, it's the thing I'm working on myself, man. So it's like, if you start giving away your truth and your power to other people, it doesn't work out well, so don't do that. <clears throat> now, perhaps I'm reading that <clears throat> too much into that, but yeah, just even if, you know, no, you don't need me. You need you, man. My magic seems to be stagnant. Why? The contemplator. This would suggest to me that because you, you need to sit with it, you need to understand it, that the kind of... There's, in a sense, a paradox thing going on where your magic is being stagnant 
because it needs to be stagnant for under for you to understand why it is stagnant and that you have to sit with that and let that reveal something to you now that's not helpful at all um I have found that when my magic becomes stagnant, that there's some area of my life that wouldn't seem connected at all that I need to work out or sort out or fix. And once that happens, it seems to turn the tap back on for the magic current, for the water of magic to come through or the barriers lift of the, you know, the, the, the free flowing river. Or the energy man, you know, flows through, whatever. The vibes return. And um, sometimes well, it can be you have to sort out something with, um, you know, a particular troubled relationship. Or you have to, you know, it, it can be things that you have something you're putting off. It's very simple, like, but it can be really there in the back of your mind the whole time. Like cleaning your room or something like that. You know, something that gets the energy moving or... I don't know, returning the books to the library or whatever it is that's there's just something as mundane as that can have a, a, a blocking effect. But there's bound to be, I would suggest, if you contemplate, sit down, but why is your magic stagnant? There will be something that is not necessarily related to magic or your studies or any of those things that in your life you know you have to do and you're avoiding. And when you do that, I'm not saying that it'll immediately go, ah, oh, wizard, but it'll start to flow again and your life will just have a bit more of a... If my life is anything to go by, when I do these things, that's what happens to me. And I assume I'm not that special or unique, so that I have to... Uh, uh, it has to be inferred that at least in some way my experience will be similar to your experience. Not completely, obviously. But uh, yeah, so just have a sit down, med meditate on it, not in the kind of um, mindfulness, concentration, med like a contemplate it. Have a contemplation, allow it to kind of develop in your mind, hand it over to your right brain, you know, your, your unconscious and uh, see, see, what, see what is coming out. See, you know, pay attention to your dreams, to the synchronicities, all of these type of things and look for the magic, look for it because it's always there. It's just we tend to get blind to it. Good luck with that. I hope it works out for you and you don't need me. I drink tea. What shall I do about the situation with my neighbours? Oh no, this can't be good. <laughs> No one ever asks, what can I do about the situation with my neighbours? Because they're awesome and they're just too good. The, the people, they're just so nice. Um, <laughs> they make me feel bad about myself not being so nice. So there's obviously uh, neighbours from hell going on. Although, that's a presupposition for me and I can't give it to other people about doing that and then doing it myself. I bet you I'm right though. The healer. Hmm. I drink tea. You're not going to like this answer. You have to heal the relationship with your neighbours. And I assume, given my presupposition being correct, um, that it has become anti antagonistic between the two years. Or at least they have to you. And in some way you need to rather than banish, rather than destroy, rather than kill, rather than set them on fire, <laughs> rather than you know hire a tank and run down their house, or whatever it is, bulldoze a tank. Why would you tank a house? Bulldoze their house. Um, you, the situation can be resolved by healing it, by extending a hand, by um, raising the white flag and starting again uh, and try and pull back whatever antagonism and animosity that has been created between the two of you. Uh, I, bet, I would bet a lot of money that they, that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what the 40 servants have said that you should do. Um, and who am I to argue with them? Good luck with that though, I mean, that, that must be a nightmare. Unless, of course, you know, they are the, the greatest people you've ever met and they're just too nice and it's, that's hard to deal with. Uh, Craig, what's getting between me and K? The road opener. Um, lack of opportunity. Um, being sometimes feels like you get a download of these things, but I'm sure it's just my mass, mass, <clears throat> machinations of my brain. Um, there seems to be contraction in that there, in some way, you have decided that it, this thing has to be in a certain way. That um, I don't know if it's your relationship or the idea in general. I don't know obviously what the situation is at all. But um, that you need to look at it 
from a completely different perspective and have a completely different solution or allow something completely new to evolve out of it. The road opener is the classic road opener. Um, and it's kind of confused in 47s because you have the Ganesha element, which is the remover of obstacles. So you have that kind of thing of that between me and my goal, there is an obstacle and, you know, there's the removal of that. But the road opener also has this thing of between there's my perceived goal. There's the thing that I think will make me happy. And this is the road. But the road is blocked. But the road opener, and I think it's what I suggest in here, is that there's other roads for other things that will make you happier. And that could be blocked because it's not, it's not the thing for you. Now, and I, I'm not a destiny man or, or thing, but I think you could pursue that and get what you want, but ultimately won't be as satisfying in the way you think it will be. I'm talking more openly than just your specific question here, uh, Craig. But, so that I, but I do think in the sense of that the road opener in this thing is saying that it, because you've been so single pointed possibly, or you have a very kind of, a sense of how this should be you're getting between you know that there is an obstacle that instead rather than trying to bull through that wall or that obstacle to get to this thing there's probably other roads and those roads might lead to whatever uh, k represents and it might not but it, it, it's where you are you can't get where you're going from this thing from this this road and the road opener wants you to know, to know whether you choose the mission or not, that there's other roads available. And so that in the classic road opener, it's a new opportunity, a new thing to look at, a new way to something else that you're not necessarily aware of because you're so focused on a particular path. So I think that's everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm getting a, a warning on my SD card that we've two minutes left, so that's pretty pretty good that it happened that way. Um, we do this every, every month. We also do a question and answer thing. Um, the podcast comes out every week. Me and Spud talk about many things, uh, usually a documentary or a book or something that we've read, and that kind of is the catalyst for further uh, discussion. Come join us on the Discord. All the links will be in the show description below. And good people of the internet, may have a wonderful, wonderful day, a wonderful week. And I'll talk to you all soon. Be well, and please, may our best days be ahead.